Actually, let me first put my hand down because it's hard to listen to someone put their hand up. Um, <laughs> uh, so I, I think first, let me just say I really appreciate uh, the diligence and work of applicants in bringing forward a, a project in consultation with stakeholders, including our environmental community. I think this kind of broad consultation is what we need to see, what we need to see for projects in our county. So I'd like to move to approve uh, with two minor amendments, meant only to clarify the already existing intent of this uh, item. It's vital that the companies we do business with as a county support good jobs and fair wages for our region's workers. This especially includes entities that lease a valuable piece of publicly owned property. That's why I'm working through our fiscal subcommittee, which we created on January 12th, to bring forward a new policy that will require all construction projects funded with county dollars and all projects on property leased from the county to treat workers fairly and invest in San Diego families. This will include requirements that contractors and subcontractors employ a skilled and trained workforce and that operators offers first priority of local hire to local San Diego County residents. I greatly welcome input from stakeholders and community members on additional elements and considerations as we develop this policy. Chair Fletcher and I, as the members on our fiscal subcommittee, will be looking forward to bringing forward a new comprehensive pro-worker policy on May 18th. So as to the specific action in front of us today, uh, my understanding is that section 6.3A in the proposed contract for this item ensures that leasees will be bound by any future policies, including the new policy I just described if enacted. Uh, can I ask that county council, uh, this is a question for county council, can I ask that county council verify that the current draft contract, specifically section 6.3A, will ensure that leasees comply with future board policies? Yes, Supervisor Lawson Reamer, the lease currently requires the lessee to comply with future applicable board policies, including this one. Great. Thank you so much for the clarification. And um, can I ask, I think uh, uh, applicant lessee is here today. Is that correct? Question for the applicant. Yes, they're still on the line. Great. So I, I think my question for applicant is whether they are, are intending to comply with the section 6.3a in the contract that's currently being negotiated. If the applicant can please press star six to unmute themselves so they can respond. Again, please press star. Are six. you able to, are you able to hear me? This is Lee Chesnut. Yes, we yes. can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Um, what I just heard was a reference to language that was presented to us um, very recently, which I actually did tell the county um, uh, uh, legal team and the county administration that that language is not acceptable. Um, my position is that the existing lease has protections for all applicable applicable federal, state, county, and local laws that are in effect now or in the future. And that adding a provision like that um, is something that I couldn't agree to. Um, it just uh, prohibits my ability to um, engage subtenants for the project that, that the, the issue is an unknown risk that is potentially coming from a policy approach that could be um, or would be enacted in the future. So I'm prepared to move forward with the project as it, is, as it has been prepared. And as my understanding was that the lease was already uh, prepared without the changes, I've made it clear that we could not accept a change like that. Um, so thank you so much for, the, for answering the question. So um, can I ask County Council whether uh, absent section 6.3a, whether um, Lisi would be uh, bound um, by uh, future policy changes um, that the board uh, might make, uh, particularly uh, around workforce provisions? Yes, we have Supervi uh, Senior Deputy County Counsel Tom Bosworth is available to ask answer questions on the lease. Very good, thank you so much. Had a little trouble getting the mic on. Um, I think the issue is that um, the lessee has just communicated that they wouldn't um, be willing to include a provision in the lease that would allow them to, or require them to comply with policy. But that provision still requires them to comply with law, ordinance. 
So what I'm hearing is that they're they're requesting that if the county is going to um, enact or require provisions that address um, things like minimum wage or, or other labor requirements, that it be done by ordinance. So it's still possible with 6.3a to get compliance. It's just not as easy because instead of it being a policy which the board can enact in one hearing, we're talking about an ordinance that would require two. Okay, that's very helpful. Um, so I think my my intent and hope would be to support this uh, moving forward with this lease uh, arrangement so that if enacted on May 18th, um, an ordinance that Chair Fletcher and I are looking to bring forward to protect our local for workforce would apply to the workforce at this site as well as all other future projects, leases, and um, county transactions. Um, so. Again, I, I do support this moving forward and um, for further clarity, would like to make the following two amendments um, to this item. Uh, the first is to direct the CAO to ensure that the final version of the executed contract reply, requires Lisi to comply with uh, current and future laws and ordinances, including future uh, workforce policies and ordinances as already uh, discussed today. And then uh, secondly, to, no to direct the CAO to notify the leasee, which I think is notified by virtue of being on the phone today, uh, that a workforce policy is currently under development by the fiscal subcommittee of the Board of Supervisors. And if, if enacted by a majority of the board would be applicable to this lease as well. Um, you know, my view is that this is a good project and I would like to see it move forward. I think creating good jobs is a regional challenge and requires a regional, not a piecemeal response. And so I'm going to be excited to bring forward a comprehensive policy to strengthen our local workforce and invest in San Diego families on May 18th for this and future projects. Thanks. Thank you. Let me ask the maker of the 